Hey, in this video, let's take a character from uh, ZBrush and um, bring him into Blender and see if we can create some kind of an epic uh, lighting, right? Beautiful lighting in uh, Blender. What would be the process? And one of the uh, important things that um, I should point out is that this character does not have any UVs um, and he does not have uh, textures or anything like that. He's just simply straight up poly painted. And if you want to see how this was created step by step, you can view uh, this tutorial right here. All right, so uh, let's say you have your own character that you would like to uh, do this with, or maybe uh, you followed my tutorial and you have something very similar to what I'm uh, seeing here. All right, all right. so what would be the first step? The first step would be obviously to optimize the character. So um, make sure that you take a moment to decimate your character. And as you decimate, just make sure you say, use and keep poly paint. In this example, I got it down to about 600,000 points. So there's no need for this character to be you know, in millions and millions of polygons or points, right? So let's go ahead and just simply export this out. I'm gonna choose, uh, I'm gonna leave it as decimated slimer.fbx. I'm gonna say save. All right, in this uh, FBX export options, just make sure it's set to bin and go ahead and say okay. Let's jump into Blender. And here I am in Blender 4.1. I'm gonna simply select my cube. I'm gonna press delete on my keyboard, go to file, do, uh, let's go ahead and import and let's import the FBX model of our uh, character. All right, I'm gonna find my FBX and say import. Um, as you can see, the model comes in really, really tiny. So I'm gonna press S on my keyboard and start to drag the scale. I'm gonna click and let's do this one more time. Press S and let's just scale this up. And now uh, we have something that's a little bit better uh, scale wise, right? All right, I'm gonna middle mouse drag to start rotating. And then I'm gonna press the Alt key on my keyboard to uh, snap into the side view. I'm gonna grab my move and just simply move this guy uh, up so he's floating a little bit above the ground. Uh, very nice. Next, let's go ahead and activate the poly paint on our character. So to do this, I'm gonna select my character. I'm gonna jump into the data tab. And in here, let's just find something called color attributes. We can see that the poly paint is called attribute. I'm gonna double click on this, or rename this to V color. Next, I'm gonna switch to my uh, shading mode here. I'm gonna jump into the shading uh, network here. And let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna press Shift A, press search, and then I'm gonna double click on this word attribute. Once I double click on it, you can see a little box um, plops down. I'm gonna take this color, I'm gonna plug it into the base color of my character. And in here, I'm gonna name, I'm gonna type the name of my uh, poly paint, which is gonna be V color, press enter. And now I can see the poly paint or the vertex colors, right? Um, whatever you wanna call it uh, here in Blender, pretty cool. Let's jump into uh, layout and take a look. And it looks very similar to what I would see in uh, ZBrush. One of the things I would like to actually do is add a little bit of specularity. So let me jump back into the shading and let's just adjust the roughness to uh, give them a little bit of a wet look. Let's jump into our uh, layout and take a look. And now you can see there's a little bit of a specularity on this guy. All right, so once we activate the vertex color, let's go ahead and click on our camera and let's click on this uh, toggle enable view navigation within the camera view. So I'm gonna lock this up. Let's just simply position our character in our viewport, right? So maybe let's just decide what looks best. I think something like this totally works. He's kind of looking at us. All right, if we wanted to adjust the focal length of the camera, we can select the camera. And right here, you can see the focal length is set to 50, which means the image is somewhat flat, right? So let's go ahead and change this to maybe 35, press enter. And now if I zoom in, that's gonna be a little bit uh, more interesting. If I wanted to make it even more cartoony and exaggerated, I can take it maybe even to 25. All right, and now you can see the image is maybe a little more dynamic, right? The hand is a little bit larger because it's closer to the lens and you can see how uh, it just feels a little more in alignment with what this character is. All right, so next let's go ahead and jump into the rendered mode by clicking on this third button here. And this will uh, let us know what type of lighting we currently have in the scene and what else needs to be adjusted. Now, one of the things we can see is that there's a default light that is currently set up and active in the uh, layout, right? So let's go ahead and do this. Let's jump out of the camera view 
How do we delete the default light that we're seeing right here? Well, I can just go on the outliner, right? I can press select light and just press delete. And that's going to completely delete all uh, default lights. So next, since we deleted the uh, default light, let's go ahead and plug in the HDRI image uh, for this. I'm gonna go into my world uh, tab here. Next, let's go ahead and click on color. Let's find something called environment texture. Let's go ahead and say new. I'm gonna say new image. I'm going to say open image. I'm going to navigate to my HDR uh, folder that I have. And some of these were just saved from uh, the internet. If you go to Google and just type in free HDR, uh, there's going to be many different resources where you can uh, find some. One of the uh, great websites is called Polyhaven. You can check that out. I'm just going to grab one that I already have and I'm going to say open. All right. So this one uh, feels pretty good. If you wanted to adjust the strength of your HDR image, of course, you can just dial it down. Uh, maybe instead of one, I could do something like point, let's just do something like point 0.8. Next, let's drop a few lights in here. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say add light and let's just drop something like the area light. I'm gonna move it into position. If I wanted to make it a little bit larger, I can press S and scale this up. Let's go ahead and uh, position this first light kind of in the front of the character. And you can grab this yellow controller and just kind of point to, to the mesh. So I'm just going to simply point to my uh, character. All right, another thing maybe I can do is just move this a little bit uh, further up. And let's just see if we like this. All right, if you wanted to see how this light is actually affecting the character, um, we need to dial up the power. Let's just dial this up a lot. So I'm going to go uh, all the way to 1500. All right, I can move it up and down and I can decide uh, what looks good. Let's just do something like this. If we wanted to change the color of the light, we can of course just go to the color and maybe make it just a little bit warmer. So you can see like there's like a reddish tint. All right, very cool. Uh, it would be nice if we could hide this image so we don't, uh, you know, we don't need to focus on that. All right, so how do we hide this image? Um, to do this, what we need to do is we need to jump into something called render properties. And in here you can see by default, um, it's currently set to Eve. I'm going to switch this to cycles. As soon as, as, soon as I switch it to cycles, um, I'm going to be able to go into the world tab. And in here, there's something called ray visibility. If I open that up and uncheck camera, you can see that uh, I am now not seeing the background image, but instead I'm just seeing the lighting that's affecting my character. All right, next let's uh, add one more light to this and that's gonna be our rim light, right? So if I select this area light, I can see uh, how it's currently positioned. If I hold down Shift and D and then start dragging, you can see a second light was created. If I uh, dr click on it, it's gonna uh, you know get dropped in the scene and now if I grab this yellow handle, I can just point back to my character, right? And that's gonna be kind of the uh, rim light. So let's just get this into somewhat uh, good position. I can use this little handle right here to put it maybe more on the back of the character. And the other thing that I need to do is just maybe uh, dial up the power of this, right? So to do this, I'm going to go to lights. And while this is selected, um, the front light was kind of a warm light. So let's make this one to be a little uh, cool. So I'm just going to do like a light blue. That's fine. And let's just really dial this up. Now we have a couple things going on, right? We have this nice rim light hitting our character from the back and then we have kind of a warm uh, light in front. At this point, we can just adjust the size. Once again, we can press S, maybe make it a little bit larger if you want something a little bit stronger. Maybe I can even make it uh, just a little bit lighter as well. And you know what? Let me pump this up to like 5,000. And I like this a lot because I'm starting to see a really nice rim light going around the hand as well. All right, and then of course, uh, once again, if you wanna change and make this a little bit sharper, you have something called size, and in here, you can just drag it down. You can see as I'm adjusting the size, it's dramatically changing the way the light is hitting the surface of my character, right? So in this case, uh, maybe something like this is even better. All right, if I wanted to adjust any of my materials, uh, at any point I can select my mesh, I can go into the material settings, and in here you have a bunch of different things, including subsurface, you have coat, Maybe let's uh, punch in a little bit of a coat and that's going to give us that nice uh, wet look, which honestly I kind of like. We can do a little subsurface. Let's just uh, give it a little, little weight there. We can check our specular and see if you're, we're happy with the white or of course we can make it maybe a little more green, something like that uh, I think makes sense. 
Now if I switch back into my camera view, I can see what that looks like. Um, I can of course change the rendering angle and the only thing that's la uh, the only other thing that I need to do is just simply uh, hit render and see what the results are. Let's check that out. I'm going to go to render and I'm going to say render image. If you wanted to control the dimensions of your image, let's take a look and see where that is. We can go into something called output and in here you can see it's currently set to 1920 by 1080 and of course um, I can change the size as I wish. All right, so that looks good. Let's just do another render image. All right, and there you have it. So thank you for uh, watching this video. I will uh, see you guys in our next one.